So at this time, like as of filming this video, I have not had a response from Farfetch. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. If this is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. My worst purchases for 2021. My worst luxury purchases for 2021 anyway. And I'm going to preface the video by saying that I don't own any of these items anymore because I returned all of them pretty much immediately. Now I'm actually very pleased to say that this list is quite short. There are only three items on it and if you've watched my videos for any length of time you're probably going to know which three items I'm going to say and if you haven't that is perfectly fine because I'm going to get into that now. But I'm glad to say that there are only three items on this list and that's pretty much because I tend to really, really, really think my purchases through. I don't impulse buy very often, and so when I make a purchase, it's generally going to be a good purchase. In fact, I think that in the whole of my luxury buying career, I only really have regretted a few purchases, like a handful. And so the fact that I don't have, oh, and the, the purchases that I've regretted that I mean that I've kept, like I've only regretted a handful of purchases that I've actually bought and currently own or did own in the past. So the fact that this list only has three items I think is pretty good. I'm gonna go in order of purchase. So the first item, and you know, getting into it without any fanfare, the first item was this vintage Chanel single flap that I bought off of Vestier Collective from Rebag. So I purchased through Vestier Collective, but I purchased it from Rebag, they were the, the seller. And this wasn't going to be a worse purchase, or it shouldn't have been a worse purchase because this bag actually was a wish list item for me. This particular exact bag with this style, like the bordered edging, was a wish list bag that I'd been tracking down for months. And I, the, the bag that I found was everything that I wanted. It came with the authenticity card. It was a beautiful black lambskin. It came with the burgundy interior, which some of the bags did and some of the bags came with black interior. So this bag was supposedly everything I wanted. And I purchased it through Bestiaire Collective because purchasing it through them, I actually had a 10% off discount code and it had already been marked down. So it ended up being less expensive purchasing it through the third party than purchasing it direct from Rebag. And I don't think that this would have been any different of an outcome had I purchased it direct through Rebag I, I, because the bag ended up being the same regardless. But Vestier Collective was not a great buying experience. The bag came without any protective packaging at all. Like it was literally just a Chanel bag thrown in a box with some tissue paper and that was it. Like there was no protective padding from the elements. There's nothing to stop the bag from getting dinged around in shipping, like nothing. And that I will say kind of didn't color the experience super well. But even if it hadn't, the bag itself, unfortunately, was a miss because as soon as I touched it, it felt like plastic. And that is real bad, especially for like a Chanel leather, which is supposed to be like, the lambskin is supposed to be super soft and super buttery is the term that a lot of people use, but it's true. It's like, it's super smooth. It's supple lambskin, vintage Chanel lambskin is also supposed to be very durable or it is in my experience anyway. So it was supposed to be durable and a very supple soft leather. And I know what Chanel lambskin feels like or what it's supposed to feel like when it is in its original untreated state. And from handling the bag, just, you know, it felt so dry and so stiff and so matte. I believe in my video, because I had an unboxing video, I'll link it for you, but it felt almost sticky. Like it felt as though there was a little bit of like stick to it when I touched it with my fingers. And it led me to believe that the bag had been painted, like re-dyed in, in some capacity. And that's very unfortunate because once a leather bag is re-dyed or repainted, it really loses something in terms of the integrity of the leather. It becomes slightly more durable because it's got a coat of paint on it, but the integrity of the leather is compromised. It doesn't wear as well in long term, pretty much. It also feels bad, like it, it doesn't feel good, especially if you have a proclivity towards how leather is supposed to feel, and I personally do. It, it's kind of one of the reasons why I got into leather and why I like it so much, the different feels and the different textures and how the different histories of how different tanning processes work. And it's, I'm a nerd, okay? Like I've established this on my channel. I am a nerd about the sort of thing. So the fact that Chanel lambskin leather had been essentially irreparably damaged to me, I believe that painting and dyeing a bag 
especially a bag of that caliber with that history and that make damages it. I believe that dyed bags are damaged bags. Like they lose a lot of the value to me personally, not resale value. Although if you do dye a bag, it does, the resale value does plummet. But for me, the value of the bag in my collection and being able to own it and have that as a piece of history, that it don't, doesn't have a lot of value to me anymore if it's a dyed bag. Handling it really made me unhappy and I ended up sending it back. And the thing is, I had several people in the comments ask me if the bag hadn't felt like that, if it hadn't been a damaged item, would I have kept it? And I genuinely don't know. I will say that that experience did kind of color that particular bag style for me a little bit. I did try it on and I thought it was a beautiful bag, but it was very, it was a boxy shape. And it's kind of funny because I don't think that it was a boxy shape that didn't flatter me, but I think that I was so put off by the feel of the leather and the packaging that the bag itself, I just couldn't like any aspect of it. It was arguably a beautiful Chanel bag. Like I still look at these bags and I think they're beautiful, but something about it, having that experience, no longer makes me want to own it anymore. And I think that is partially why it's a worst purchase. Not because I got a bag that I ended up having to send back because I did return it without issue. I returned it, I got my money back. Like that was, that was no problem. It was the worst purchase because it really did damage my thought of this bag that I had previously thought was so beautiful. So that's a little bit weird, you know, that, you know, you have an experience and then the bag itself no longer is as nice because it's got this negative connotation to it. And, you know, there are other vintage bags. There are a brevity of beautiful vintage Chanel bags or beautiful vintage other bags, vintage Hermes bags, vintage Louis Vuitton that I can admire and desire. So it's not the worst thing in the world to no longer want this one, but it is kind of a little funny slash distasteful that my, you know, my admiration for this particular style has been so squashed because of this, this whole buying experience. So that was bag regret number one or worst luxury purchase number one of 2021. And now on to number two, which is this YSL card holder that I purchased from The Real Real. Oh boy, okay. So I bought this YSL card holder. I unboxed it on my channel. I was giddy in the video. I loved it. I had been tracking down the perfect YSL color for me. I really wanted a blue or a green. And I found this beautiful like tealy blue green on The Real Real and I bought it immediately. And I was so excited to unbox it. I actually got it for below retail, which you know, is, is nice, but the reason I hadn't bought it new from the boutique was because I couldn't find the color. It wasn't because I was trying to make a savings on the card holder, it was because I was trying to find this specific kind of color. So I bought it, I unboxed it on my channel, I am like grinning the entire time, and then I have it for a couple of days and I start getting suspicious. Like I start noticing things about it that really bother me placements of certain things seem off, the YSL logo seemed off, some of the damage that it like immediately started acquiring, like it was just, I, I had I had a suspicion, shall we say, and then I started doing some more digging, I did a lot of comparison research, I did a whole video about it, which I will also link for you, because if you're interested in buying YSL, I think it's a good one to watch, but the ultimate conclusion was that it was an inauthentic item, that the Real Real had sold me because they had not done enough quality authenticity checks in their own warehouse, and they sent me a fake item. So I did return it, and it was at least, it was a painless experience. It was a painless process to send it back. I contacted them and I said, hey, I, this isn't real. You'd sold me something not real. And they immediately apologized. They accepted the refund and the return. And here's the thing, it was not relisted on the real real. It wasn't relisted. I checked. I like checked the real real for several weeks afterwards to see if it was being resold because then I would have had a big problem with the real real, but it wasn't relisted for sale. So, you know, I have mixed feelings about the real real, of course, especially if like their authenticity check is not the best. It arrived very well packaged, like I had no complaints about that. So, I don't know, I would be very suspect and worry about buying leather goods from the real real again. I still don't mind purchasing clothing from them because I, I worry less or clothing matters a little bit less to me, especially if I'm not buying thousands of dollars worth of clothing. Like I'm not gonna buy a vintage Chanel suit jacket from the real real probably, but like 
Clothes? Probably. I, I, I could do that, but maybe not, you know, sunglasses, which are really easily counterfeited. Not bags, maybe. I don't know. Jury's still out on that, but you know, it, it, it was a worse purchase because it was, it was fake. Like I, I, I didn't intend to buy a fake and I got sold one and that was a worse purchase because, you know, when you're trying to buy an authentic item and you spend authentic item money and then you get an inauthentic one, that's not a good buy. The last item on my list is unfortunately a very recent experience and it's unfortunate for a couple of reasons because this is an item that I liked and I didn't plan on returning. I unboxed it, I was excited, I loved the color. You probably know where I'm going with this. I love the color, but okay, so made a video about this too. I purchased a YSL Mini Lou camera bag in this beautiful field green color. It is one of my favorite colors that YSL has come out with and it was a YSL green with silver hardware, which was basically what I've been looking for. So I bought it and I bought it right before the price increase, okay? So I was really happy. I was all excited to unbox it. I was giddy about it. The color was gorgeous, but it was missing certain items that a number of you said it was supposed to come with. Now I've had mixed comments about this. I've had some people assure me that YSL does come with authenticity cards and that was the overwhelming majority of you. I had a few people say that they don't and I'm making it up which, you know, you could at least be kinder about that, but like, okay, other people said that they did come with it, whatever. Some people commented on the dust bag. Basically, it, it didn't come with some things that I was not comfortable with not getting from a new product. The dust bag was also like super wrinkled. The, like, the, the, the it was not the, you know, the tassel was bent. It was not a new item and I had purchased and paid for a new item. So I contacted Farfetch and they said that they'd be happy to process a return and I could rebuy it. And I said, well, I don't want to rebuy it because if I do, then I have to pay the additional like $200 that it went up by. And there was some negotiation. I made a, several videos about this, but the bottom line was, okay, send it back to us. We will give you a refund and then we will issue you a credit and a discount code so you can rebuy it for the same price. Great. Okay, sure. And then the process to return it and have it processed in their warehouse took so long that the item went out of stock. Not super pleased about that. Like it took almost a month for me to send back the item and to process the return and then to initiate the, the refund. And in that time period, the item went out of stock. Now I knew it was a gamble to return it in the first place. And some of you warned me about that, but had I had the return process in a timely manner, you know, two weeks, even three weeks, it would still have been in stock, but it wasn't. And then to put the icing on the cake, except that's a positive expression. So to put the straw on the camel's back, I guess, Farfetch didn't refund my money. They put the all of the money as a credit on Farfetch. So I could only use it on Farfetch. They didn't refund my credit card, which we had not discussed. We had discussed a credit card refund and then a credit for the, the discrepancy amount so I could rebuy it. So that, and again, like this took a month of time, which is too long. It's too long to have that much money tied up in their own folly. It, it really is. So I contacted them again and said, hey, so I want a credit card refund, not a credit on my Farfetch account, please fix it. You know, I was very polite. I always am when dealing with customer service representatives because it's not their fault. So I, I did that and I didn't get a response. And I waited two days and then I sent a follow-up email saying, hi, I'd like to contact you again in regards to this matter, please respond to me and I didn't get a response. And so I've sent another follow-up email. I had to send three emails in regards to getting my money back after returning the item and having it refunded and this whole process taking over a month already. So at this time, like as of filming this video, I have not had a response from Farfetch in regards to actually refunding my credit card, nothing. And I made a, I've been doing Vlogmas this month and I made a Vlogmas update about that too, in just, just in terms of the, the whole credit card refund. So I'll just link those videos if you're interested. But just the fact that they were going to address the issue, it took them so long. And then this, 
that's, that, that's so unprofessional, especially for an international company that deals with luxury goods, thousands of dollars of, of product that people are trusting them to, to send them and deal with, thousands of dollars. And I understand that they're the intermediary, but if they're the intermediary that has my money, they should be handling that properly. And I am very upset with Farfetch at this point. Originally, I was fine. I, originally, I was like, oh, okay, they're solving the problem. I appreciate the credit. Like, great. But now with this additional pile of, of nonsense, like, I have only ever heard positive things about Farfetch because I've only ever heard sponsored content about Farfetch. I have never actually seen a non-positive video about a Farfetch experience, really. And I kind of wonder if that's because people hope to be sponsored by, by Farfetch, so they don't want to make any waves by saying negative things, because Farfetch is a pretty big sponsor in the luxury community. So I can I can kind of see that, like no, no shame to anybody who, who does that. Uh, I will probably never be sponsored by Farfetch in the event that they like Google my videos, because obviously I'm not having a great experience with them but I, that matters less to me than integrity does. So I am putting that out on the internet that this has happened and I'm not too fussed. So I, I still don't have a refund for my, my money and that's over a thousand dollars. It's just on my credit card that Farfetch is not giving back to me. So I did, I did send them a final email, a final follow-up email saying that, hey, if this isn't addressed, I'm going to just open a dispute with my credit card company because you've attempted, you, <laughs> This is theft. This is this is active fraud now. You have stolen my money because you have not returned it in the manner in which it was agreed upon. I have email evidence that said that this would happen. I sent the item back. I no longer have the item. Like, I, I would like my, my money back, please. So if you're interested in an update about what ends up happening with that, feel free to let me know. I'll make an update did video or like a community post about it or something. But just like, this has been... All, like all of these experiences have been, they, they, all of these have been worse luxury purchases, not even necessarily because of the item sometimes, but because of the the method in which I bought the item or the party that I bought the item. Like, okay, Vestier Collective did not do a very good packaging job. And then obviously the item was not great. It was damaged. The Real Real did not do a very good authentication job. And then the item wasn't authentic. And then Farfetch, you know, they sent me an item that was in some cases kind of damaged in terms of like, you know, it was missing. And then they were going to process return. And if they had processed the return in a timely manner properly, it would have been fine. But now it's just like, this is a, this is a terrible experience. This is one of the worst experiences I've had with buying luxury in general, really. Like buying from Farfetch has been one of my worst luxury experiences in terms of like purchasing that's bad. That's not good, Farfetch. I, I, that, that's, that's not good. So yeah, those are just my, my, three, <laughs> my three worst luxury purchases that ultimately don't really have anything to do with the item. Like these weren't items that I bought and ended up not working for me, really. These weren't items that I bought and still own and wish I could get rid of. These aren't even items that I bought and used and then found that they didn't work for me and now I'm stuck with them. Some of those might, you know, overlap, but like th these aren't items that I bought and have and spent my money on and like was out money, you know, except for maybe Farfetch. We'll see what happens with that. But these are items that just were worst purchases because of everything surrounding the, the experience of buying the item. And in some ways, I think that's almost good. Like it's nice that I don't have money tied up in a worst purchase. It's nice that the purchases I did make this year that I did keep, that I was able to keep, were all good ones. Like when you, I'm going to be making the best luxury purchases video and it's not gonna be everything I bought this year because you know, some things are better than others, but there aren't any things that I bought this year really in terms of luxury that I regret buying. I mean, we all have items that we do regret buying that we own or have to sell or give away or whatever. Like obviously that was the 2020 purchase that was an actual regret that I still currently possess. But in terms of this year, 2021, I actually don't really have any worse luxury purchases that are sitting in my closet that I've spent the money on that are just not now taking up space and making me sad to look at them. So that's, that's good. That's a positive. 
I do think that I've learned a lot in terms of buying luxury online this year because I, I mean, I've bought pre-loved luxury for a long time. I bought pre-loved everything for a very long time, but this was the first year that I bought from Vestier Collective, for instance, and that was an experience in terms of their packaging, you know? This was also the first year that I bought from The Real Real, and I had bought clothes previously, so this was the first time buying leather goods with them, and then obviously, you know what happened. This was my first year buying from Farfetch, and if the item had come with everything it was supposed to, not that Farfetch does quality checks, because again, the boutique sends it to Farfetch, Farfetch puts it in a box and then sends it on, so Farfetch doesn't do any quality checks, apparently, which, all right, that's a choice. But, you know, if the boutique supposedly had sent everything properly, there would have been no problem. If Farfetch had handled the return in a timely manner, there would have been no problem. If Farfetch had returned my money when I asked them to, <laughs> there would have been no problem. But now I have this, like, idea about Farfetch, and that's not great. And I, I've probably talked about Farfetch too much now, and that's getting into a negative spiral. So, like, bottom line is... I didn't have a great experience. No thank you right now. I, I, something, would, something good would have to happen to, to fix that experience, and I don't know what it is. In terms of all of these experiences, it is actually kind of hard to say that I will never buy from any of these retailers ever again. And that's because buying luxury online, there aren't a lot of places to do it especially in terms of buying pre-loved. Like, buying pre-loved luxury, you have, like, Vestier Collective, Rebag, Fashion File, Yugi's Closet, Anne's Fabulous Finds, and eBay. Th those are the, the prime places. And, like, Mercari and Poshmark, I'm not buying a luxury good on Poshmark. Poshmark's authentication process is garbage. Poshmark's quality control is garbage. I've mentioned, you know, a number of times that I'm into Vintage Coach. Poshmark has a ridiculous number of Vintage Coach fakes on their website. Just so many, just so many fake coach bags on Poshmark. Just, and you report it and they do nothing. And people buy it and then report it and they do nothing. So I, I wouldn't recommend buying coach or, like, unless you're sure and you get it authenticated or you are, you know how to authenticate. Like, don't buy vintage coach on Poshmark. On that note, don't buy luxury goods on Poshmark. Like, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Buy whatever you want, wherever you want. But just be warned that some places are much less reputable and some places are much less good in terms of buying things. And I would put Vestier Collective, you know, in that case. There's there's a lot of counterfeits on Vestier Collective because they don't do authenticity check quality control in the same manner. So you definitely want to get third-party authenticated. So, but, th you know, that's just another thing. But... But, you know, I'm into vintage, and there, there are not that many places to buy them. So, you know, if I want to buy a vintage bag, it's, it's Rebag or Fashion File maybe, but Fashion File's prices are honestly astronomical at this time. And they don't really have a lot of vintage anymore. They, they used to have more, but now it's mostly like pre-loved, reloved, or new items that they're selling at a premium, which I also don't love. I mean, sometimes you can find really good deals. Like, I've gotten some really good deals from Fashion File this year, so I'm not bashing them for their prices necessarily, it's just that they're not the best place to buy from, honestly, in terms of what I look for half the time. So, you know, if I want to get a vintage piece, Vestier Collective might be a place to look. The Real Real might be a place to look. In terms of buying a number of different types of new pieces, Farfetch has a huge, huge, huge stock because it's stock from all over the world. So, like the green bag that I wanted, Farfetch was the only place that had it. So, of course, I bought from them. So, you know, I have a lot of mixed feelings in terms of where to buy certain things because I've had, I have several people tell me, like, what do you expect buying a, a item from not exactly the boutique. I'm like, well, the boutique didn't have it. I was looking for a specific color and Farfetch had it and the Saint Laurent website did not. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I guess I could wait for a new color to come out, but I also, you know, the price increases have something to do with it also. So, you know, it's, there's different things to learn. I've learned different lessons uh, in terms of how to return stuff, that's for sure. I've gotten real good at getting returns for places that don't have return policies. <laughs> and sometimes that's all you can do. So yeah, uh, this has been a really rambly video, but that's those are my worst luxury purchases of 2021. Again, not a really long list, but one that was long enough for me, and I'm glad it wasn't any longer. I hope this video was interesting to you, or at least slightly entertaining, and 
I don't know, maybe you have something to tell me about the Farfish debacle or the Real Real experience or even Vestir Collective, feel free to share. If you've recently had a luxury purchase regret, I also would be very interested to hear about that. Or if you want to share a luxury purchase accomplishment that, you know, get out the negativity a little bit, feel free to also share in the comments down below. I would really appreciate it. If you like this video, please do give it a like because it super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content because it helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.